Well, hello and welcome. We're going to get started. Glad you're here this morning. It's a good day to be alive, isn't it? I'm glad that you're here. We're honored that you're here, and uh, we have guests with us this morning. We're thankful that you're here as well. If it's your first time, you're an honored guest. We trust you got a good welcome from the Welcome Center, and if you'd take a moment and fill out that card in there and just let us know that you are here, you could return that to the Welcome Center after the service. We have a little gift we'd like to give you just to say we're glad that you're here. We're glad that the Lord brings people here from the north, the south, the east, and the west. He knows who he wants here, and we're thankful for a loving family here, and uh, it's a great thing to serve at Lighthouse. A couple things to mention to you. Lanterns, you have a meeting. That's folks who are 55 years of age and better. There's a meeting for you guys on Saturday, February 24. Greg and Kathleen Fowl head up that ministry, and they're out of town today. Um, they normally have a list of all the folks that are that age group, and they'll contact you, but I'm just letting you know it's Saturday the 24th, and you can put that on your calendar. Two weeks from today, the last Sunday of the month, we have the Lord's Table. So two weeks from tonight, we'd have the Lord's Table so that you know about that as well. And then the last thing I need to remind you of is the ladies' retreat. It's March, March 1 and 2, Friday and Saturday. So it's only, I don't know, is that four weeks away? It's not many. The sign-up sheet was posted on Wednesday so that you ladies could sign up. It's first grade and older. It's a mother-daughter. It's a ladies' retreat. It's a great time out at Moe Ranch, uh, just west of here. It's a great time of fellowship. I encourage you to make, a, make that a priority this year, to get out to the ladies' retreat. And uh, you can find folks to carpool with, and that's part of the fun. It's a great time. It's on the river, so you can do the canoeing. I don't know if they're going to have the water slide open. I suppose you could go down if you want to, but it's going to be a little cool in March for that. But hey, you could push somebody down. <laughs> See how it goes. The speaker uh, this year is someone that you probably have not met before. And so it's going to be a great time, and I encourage you to sign up. The sooner you can sign up, the more you can make plans. And uh, dads, let's make an effort for our wives to get away and be refreshed. You will be better, and she will be better with a break. And it'd be a good time to watch, for you to watch the kids. And otherwise, I'm already thinking about what I can do with all you dads and guys while our wives and girls are away. We can go play sports and be busy this night and that night and do all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll see what comes up with it all. But the ladies' retreat, you can sign up for it. The flyers are out there on the table so that you have all the information you need. And um, we'll just go from there. I just encourage you to make that an option this year. I just have a couple announcements as well. Uh, the Honduras missions trip. You, you are interested at all in going to our on a Honduras missions trip. We're going to have an information meeting in the library after the service this morning. If you have any questions, Miss Cindy and I will be there. And Miss Cindy has all the answers to any of the questions you may have. That's not going to be until June. All right, so it's not like, hey, next month we're going to go to Honduras or anything like that. Don't, don't worry. But it's just going to give you information, uh, what the prices are looking like right now for the airlines and so forth, and also kind of tell you what to expect, what are some of the things that we do down there. And just to let you know, a lot of things that they end up doing on these missions trips are really dependent on who is able to come uh, on the trips as well. So if you have any interest at all, you're not signing your, or etching your name in stone or anything like that right now. You're just expressing interest, we're giving you information, and we'll go from there. Other than that, this Saturday we have our Soldiers of the Cross Youth Rally. It's a youth rally thing we do with a lot of other churches in the San Antonio area, and some even outside of that, get together on a Saturday once every other month, and this month is our turn to host that rally. We have, I believe, 12 churches right now signed up to come to that, and that's for the teenagers starting at 10 to about 1.30. If you're a teenager here, and you haven't signed up for that yet, sign-up sheet is in the hall as well. It's all free. You're going to have food and everything, and uh, it's just going to be a great time. Be in prayer for that. That will be a great blessing to those that attend as well. Mr. Gretchen? And I don't have any announcements. Let's go ahead and open up this service in a word of prayer, if you would, or bow your heads. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for your grace, Father. And Lord, we thank you for this building that you've given us so we can meet together in your name, Father, and glorify your name and lift up your, our, our petitions in prayer, Father. And, and Lord, I just pray, God, that, that your Holy Spirit will have free reign in this service this morning, Father. I pray, God, that you'll be with those that are going to be uh, singing this morning, Father, and, uh, and playing the instruments, Lord. And, and Father, those that are going to be uh, praying for us a little bit later on, Father, and then the service. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you would be glorified in all that's said and done. And Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's here this morning. Father, we know that no one is here by accident, Father. But Lord, uh, that you've drawn them here. And I just pray, God, that, that we can leave here this morning saying it's been good to be in your house. And Father, I pray for those that are not able to be here this morning, Father, whether they're traveling, 
I pray for grace for that, Lord, and I pray that if they're not feeling well, Father, under the weather, I pray, God, that you would give them a speedy recovery, if you'd be glorified in doing so, Lord. And, and Father, those that are struggling with a little more serious illnesses, Father, I just pray, God, that, again, if you'd be glorified in doing so, that even now, Lord, you'd touch and heal them. And, Father, I pray that you, those that are caring for them, Father, that you give them an uh, extra measure of grace this morning, Father, that, uh, that they might not get uh, tired, Lord, or exhausted as in the care of their loved ones, Father, but I just pray, God, that you would uh, take care of them in that. Lord, again, I just pray that you'll just have your will and way in this service today, and in Jesus' name, amen. Song number 22. We'll smile and stand and praise the Lord. Sometimes our view of God is too small. Let's magnify him and view him as great as he is. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and bless his holy name. Sing praises to his majesty and all his works proclaim. Six, I sing the mighty power of God. Psalm number six. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing. a couple of songs up on the screen for you. There's so many songs out there, we can't put them all in a hymn book. We'd drop it if it was that heavy. So let's sing about the worthiness of God. He is worthy of all power and praise and glory. Let's sing this together. We'll sing to it two times. 
was slain another verse that's based on scripture the first one was revelation 4 11. here we go maybe you know this one we'll sing through it a couple times seated. We get to give of our tithes and offerings. We're so thankful for your faithful giving here at Lighthouse. It's a blessing to serve with a giving church. Brother Coleman, would you come and pray for this time of offering? Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for life and because you are worthy and you were slain for our eternal salvation. Lord, I just pray for those that might be among us today, Lord, they are physically alive, but might not be alive spiritually, God. And only you can bring about that quickening in their soul and making them aware of their need of a Savior. And God, we just pray 
that you'll bless your word as it goes forth. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's really a lot of fun to serve the Lord and to sing praise to Him. 328 is our next song. We're going to sing the first two verses, then the chorus, and then the third and fourth verses and the chorus. Only trust Him. Only trust Him now. Not just for salvation. We all need deliverance. 328. Come every soul I say. Second verse, for Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into the crimson flow that washes white as snow. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust. is the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Believe in Him without delay, and you are fully blessed. Come then and join this holy band. Dwell in that 
25 will be our final song. Kiddos, you're dismissed if you're headed to Children's Church. We're going to do the same verses. First and second verse, then the chorus, and then the last two verses in the chorus. The Lord wants to speak to your heart this morning, and it may not be real loud, so listen quietly and tender to his response. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling home. Second verse. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for Tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Amen. Please remain standing. We'll have our scripture memory and reading now. Good morning. To our memory verse first, if you turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. Romans 8, 38, 39. Still hear pages rumbling, which is a good thing. Jether, are you ready? All right. Jether's ready, you guys have to be ready. All right, I'll lead, and you guys follow. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38, 39. 
Good job. Ready? Begin. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 and 39. All right, one last time for those of you who are brave and want to say it without looking down, go for it. Ready? Begin. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38, 39. Good job. All right, if you turn back over to Isaiah chapter 12 for our verse for today, for the message, Isaiah 12. And I'll begin in verse 2 and read verse 2 and 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has come, has, is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall he draw water out of the wells of salvation. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for today, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, Lord, to hear your word preached, to worship you, Lord. I pray, God, now that you would just uh, silence our hearts and thoughts, Lord. Help us to focus on the truth of your word that you want to share with us through pastor this morning, Lord. Guide and direct our thoughts, Lord, to be focused on you and what you want us to know before we leave here today. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us each and every day, for the blessings you bestow on us continually. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but <clears throat> to your name we give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Father God, we thank you for your mercy. Because of your mercy, you have called us to your beloved. You have saved us, Lord, through the cleansing of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on us. We thank you for your truth, the truth that sets us free, the truth that keeps us, the truth that strengthens us in you. Whenever we fall, it's always your truth that upholds us. Thank you, Lord, for your great and loving kindness in our life. Lord, this morning, I am lifting up to you our pastors, Lord, oh God. I am praying for each one of them that may your anointing power may be on them each and every day, that you will lead them and that you will guide them, Lord, as they shepherd, Lord, oh God, the flocks that you have here in Lighthouse Baptist Church. And I'm, I am also praying for each one of us, Lord, as members of Lighthouse Baptist Church, that we will be a light and salt wherever we go. Help us, Lord, to be an encouragement to, to one another, to bear one another's burden, to uphold each other, to lift each other up, Lord God, for the glory of your name. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you love us. I thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to die on a cross for us. I thank you, Lord, that while we were yet sinners, that you provided a way of salvation for us. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you might just help us to um, be mindful of that great love that you have for us. And I pray, Lord, that you might help us to love you in return. Thank you, Lord, for our very many blessings that you've given us, which are truly uh, too many to name. Thank you, Lord, that we have a country where we're free to, to meet together uh, and to worship you, Lord. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you might... Um, Help us to be uh, mindful of our Christian brothers and sisters in other countries that are not so uh, fortunate, Lord. And, and truly, as we look around the world, we see more and more countries, Lord, where Christians are being persecuted for your name. And, and even places in Europe, which would generally have not long ago been considered bastions of uh, freedom of practice for religion. We see people being arrested for uh, sharing Bible verses um, against things that you call sin, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you might help us to be, uh, to be village, uh, vigilant, to, uh, to stand upon your word, to stand upon the truth. Help us, Lord, not to be shy just because it's not politically correct or, or popular at the time, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you might just strengthen our nation, help us to turn to you, back to the, that which we were founded upon, Lord. Um, 
as we look around and, and see the decay in the nation, Lord, we see the decay in our families as well. And truly, Lord, a nation's not going to be any stronger than its families. And the families in the United States are under constant attack from uh, Satan in the world, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you might strengthen our families, Lord. I pray, Lord, specifically for the families here in, in Lighthouse Baptist Church. I pray, Lord, that you might uh, be with each and every one of them. I pray, Lord, that the families might love each other, might love you, might be light uh, unto this world, and it might be strength um, to hold back uh, the, the evilness that is all around us. I pray, Lord, for pastor, that you might fill him with your power. Please, Lord, help our hearts to be attentive. Help us to learn something from your word today. In your name I pray. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. It is good to be with you in God's house today. Always to good, be with, uh, <laughs> good to be with God's people. I'll get it out. Praise God. If you're happy to be here, say amen. amen. I am glad that you are here. God is so very good. I, I've already been encouraged by the services uh, this morning. It's always good to lift up our voice and praise to the Lord. It's always good to pray to God and opportunity for a church to come together around the throne of grace and to pray. Uh, we're grateful for that. And I pray that you did enter into those prayers with us and, and, and beseech God's throne for his honor and for his glory. Let's get into our message this morning. I may have told you this story before, but it fits well with our message, so bear with me if you've heard this already. When Jordan, our, our middle child, when he was four years old, he was with mom and his two older brothers at the time at a, at a Wendy's restaurant in Elk Grove, California, and pop music was playing in the background as they stood in line waiting to order their food. And mom was thinking about what they were going to eat when Jordan looked up at his mom and pulled on her and she looked down and he said, Mom, this music is making my body move. <laughs> it's one of those stories in our family that we cherish that we tell from time to time. But most people don't realize that music is indeed a language and it does communicate. However, music does not communicate like other languages. It has an ability to bypass the intellect and go straight to the heart, to communicate directly with our emotions. That is what was happening with my son, with Jordan at that, at that time. The music spoke directly to his emotions and produced a bodily response. It happens to all of us. Because music can bypass the intellect, we are often not even conscious of its presence. And so without being aware of it, our foot can begin tapping and we don't even know that it's happened. Our body maybe begins to move a little bit like my son's body did. And then even our mood can begin to change because of the music. Sometimes if you don't get in the mood of the music, it's going to drive you crazy. And so maybe even your mood begins to change because of the music that's in the background. Now I'm not saying, now listen to me carefully. I'm not saying that our intellect is never involved in music. I'm not saying that we are always unconscious of the, of the mu music that's going on around us, that would not be true. We do intellectually engage with music as well. The point that I'm trying to make is that music does have the power to communicate to us even when we aren't aware of it. Even when we aren't aware of it and we're not paying attention. Turn me real quickly, if you would, please. Don't lose your place here in Isaiah. We will come back there. But turn with me real quickly, if you would, please, over to the book of First Chronicles. To the left in your Bible, past the book of the Psalms and Job's and Nehemiah, Esther. And, and get, if you would, please, to First Chronicles chapter number 25. First Chronicles chapter number uh, 25. Bearing in, this, bearing in mind this idea that, that music does have the power to communicate, we read here, in 1 Chronicles chapter number 25, in verse number 1, the Bible says, Moreover, David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph and of Heman and of Jedithim, uh, who, who should prophesy. So prophesying is communicating. And it talks about them prophesying with instruments, with harps, with psalteries, and with cymbals. And the number of workmen according to their service was. And so the idea that, that music has an ability to communicate, has the ability to speak, if you will, or to prophesy. It is a language. It matters, therefore, what our music is communicating. We are careful about our music here at Lighthouse Baptist Church because, again, we do believe that it does communicate. It matters to us what we're communicating up here. Amen? If it matters who, 
who stands in the pulpit and preaches and what they preach and what their message is, that it matters the message of song as well because it too is communicating. It has the power to do that. And so it matters. Turn with me, if you would, please, now back to the book of Isaiah. I said we'd go back there. I hope you left your finger there in chapter 12 in Isaiah. But turn there back, uh, back to that place, if you would, please. Now, the good news here is that if we will enter consciously into our music, we will find that music is a wonderful avenue for lifting up our hearts and emotions to God because it is a powerful language. And so it's a wonderful tool, if you will, for lifting up our hearts and minds and souls to God. As the psalmist declares, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And so lifting up our heart and singing to the Lord is a wonderful way to serve and worship God. Well then, if that's the case, then what kind of music should we enter into? Now I want you to consider that our text speaks about wells. Look, if you would, please, at verse number three that we read a moment ago. The Bible says, therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Here we have the wells of salvation, but they're also what we might call wells of the world. So if we have here on one side the the wells of salvation and we're dipping down into the wells to draw out from it, there's another kind of well that we might call the the wells, if you will, of the world. And we can draw things out of the wells of the world as, as well. But if we were drawing out from the wells of the world, what would we get from the well that is of the world? Well, the Bible says that uh, the, the things of the world are not of God. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All these things are of the world, but they are not of God. And so if we're going to draw out of the wells of this world, those are the kinds of things that we are going to draw out of it. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life according to the word of God. And these things are not of God, so they are the things of the world. And really, honestly, they don't have any eternal value because they are, again, about lust and pride and those things are emptiness they're nothingness according to the word of God and so really all we're drawing out is that which is rot and dust the rot and dust of this world in other words the wells of this world are barren wells there's nothing really there for us yet we go back to them time and time again but instead of of drawing out water or or attempting to draw out water from the wells of this world we could on the other hand attempt to draw out water from the wells of salvation and when we go over to the wells of salvation and we draw draw out for ourselves out of those particular wells we will find that it is indeed water water from God it is the water of salvation look again at verse number three therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation if it's the well of salvation we're going to draw salvation out What is this salvation all about? Look back up at verse number two where we started our reading this morning. Behold, God is my salvation. So if you're drawing salvation out of the well and God is my salvation, what do you think you're going to get? Amen. You're going to draw God out of the wells of salvation. And along with that, you get a song. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He is my song. So I can, as I'm drawing out of the wells, I'm going to get God. And along with God, I'm going to get a song. Because the Lord is my song according to the word of God. Do you see that? Drawing out from the wells of salvation. Therefore, when you draw water from the right well, you will get a song. So let's consider the fact that, number one this morning, the Lord gives me my song. The Lord gives me my song. Man is a musical being. We are musical creatures. And we are musical because our creator is musical. God is a musical being as well. The Bible says, The Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall, call, and, and shall go with the whirlwinds of the south. God shall blow a trumpet. I try to imagine that sometimes. But really, honestly, it tells me that God is musical. You say, well, the trumpet there is just making a sound. It's just, it, it's just a sound to, to call out and to guide and direct. Either way, you're still using the music to communicate. 
And God is blowing that trumpet, if you will. I, like, I, I prefer to, to think of him blowing a sound that is not just uh, to, to call to order, to call an army or anything like that, but the idea that, that God is blowing a joyful noise, if you will. But imagine the Lord blowing a trumpet. Turn me, if you would, please, to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31. The idea that God is a musical creature, a musical being in Deuteronomy 31. Once you get there, if you would, please look down at verse number 19. Deuteronomy 31 and verse number 19. God is speaking and he says in verse number 19, Now therefore write ye this song for you. So God is dictating a song. God is the author of the song, telling Moses to write it down. He gives it to Moses. So so now therefore write ye this song for you and teach it to the children of Israel Put it in their mouths that this song that I'm giving, that I have authored, that I'm giving unto you, may be a witness for me against the children of God. And so the song itself is to speak to the children of God. It's to tell them something. It's to be a witness of God. So again, we see the idea that music has the ability to communicate, but more than that is the idea that God is a musical God because it came directly from God. God wrote the song, God gave it to man, and God wants the song to be a witness for him, to speak of God. So God uses music with mankind to teach us about him. Therefore, man must be musical. We're musical because God is a musical being. But not only did did, did God create us to be musical, he also created, created music in his world. We have a musical world. The Bible says the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you in singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. The idea that when we see the, the, the beauty of the world, it, it sets our hearts as a flame, if you will, with a song. It, it's a musical creation. The Bible itself is a musical book. The Bible is filled with with a number of references to songs and music and instruments. The number is staggering. And songs are really scattered throughout the Word of God. And of course, as you know, we have an entire book, the largest book in the Bible itself, dedicated to psalms. The idea of music, and it's found throughout the Word of God. This is a musical book. God is a musical creator. We are musical beings. He's made a musical creation. And his his book is musical. And so he puts a song within man. Going all the way back to the dawn of creation. God is the one that gave us a love for music. Mankind has a love for music because God is the one that implanted it in us going again all the way back to to when man was first created. Unfortunately, like everything else that man touches, our musical nature is now a fallen nature. It is our musical sensibility, if you will, has been warped and perverted by our sin and by our sin nature. And that's true about so much. That man enjoys, even now that we have in our life now, it has fallen. It's not what it ought to be. You see, when God created the heaven and the earth, when God made this place for mankind to inhabit it, he made a perfect creation, the Bible says, that he saw it and it was very good. But now, because it's been cursed, we have thorns and thistles in this world. We have suffering that was not here originally. That perfect creation has fallen God gave to to mankind a perfect marriage. How many of you have a perfect marriage now? Yeah? Not too many hands. But the first marriage was a perfect marriage, but now we have, you know, no, no fault divorce on demand. Or at least you can go that direction. Man was given a perfect and unending life, but now death reigns in the world. Man was given true freedom and holiness. But now we are enslaved to the impurities of lust and pride. And it's all around us. And this is the world we live in now that has fallen. And music is the same way. Music has fallen with man as well. Given a song from the Spirit of God. Man was given a song from the Spirit of God. But now 
Man craves the songs of the flesh. Man would rather draw out his songs from the well of this world rather than from the wells of salvation. And we go to the wrong place and we draw out that which is dead and barren because that's what we know and that's what we love in a fallen world. And so this God-given musical gift that we have has been perverted by our nature. Consequently, what we need is a new song in our heart to see music differently. We as believers need that new perspective on music. We need to leave the dry wells of this world and draw a new song out of the wells of salvation. From the wells of salvation, God gives me my song. And he hath put a new song in my mouth, the psalmist says, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the Lord. Because I have drawn my uh, my song out of the well of salvation, now I am lifting up the name of Christ. I'm lifting up my God, almighty God, and others are seeing it and being changed because of it. They shall trust in the Lord. Now consider also that secondly, The Lord finds a place in my song. The Lord gives me my song, but secondly, the Lord finds a place in my song. Now think with me. God is the creator of all things. He then gave dominion to mankind of all those things that he had created. He gave the dominion of his creation to mankind. And we take the things that God made, we take that stuff and we use it as raw material to make stuff for ourselves, right? Man makes cars. Where does he get the material? He doesn't create the material. He has to find the material, bring it and put it together and make himself a car. We make houses for ourselves, but we didn't create the material that we use as raw materials to put together the house, that, that all comes from God. And yet we make these things for ourselves. We make, we make boats, we make planes, we make video games. Everything that we make, uh, was, was the raw material is given to us by God. So here's the question. If we're making all these things for ourselves, for the betterment of ourselves, we make these cars so we can get around, we make these phones so we can communicate, we make a home so we have, you know, protection, we have shelter from the elements, we make all these things for ourselves, wouldn't it be good if we just made something for God? If we created something for Him? Well, if that's a good thing to do, then here's the question, what should we make for Him? That's a good question. I mean, have you ever gone, listen, I'm the world's worst shopper. My wife can attest to that. But have you ever gone birthday or Christmas shopping and you can't think of anything to get your loved one? You ever been there? I've been here for three hours and I still don't have anything picked out. That's because I'm the world's worst shopper. You're probably better than I am. But we go around and we're looking for something. We can't think of anything to get for them. And the worst fear is that you, th- you, you see something and you want to get it, but you think about it and you go, well, wait a minute, what if they really hate this? You ever been there? You guys are just leaving me here by myself. That's fine. I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate that. I know you've been there, amen? I mean, wouldn't it be easier if they just told you what they want? My wife and I have an agreement. You with me? <laughs> She tells me what she wants. And wouldn't it be easier if God just told us what he wants? Well, I've got some good news. He does. Stay with me for a moment, if you would, please. We're here in Isaiah, or we were. Let's go back to Isaiah. Let's go back to our our verse here in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 12. And I want you to see here, verse number 2. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the, Lord God, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. The fact that the Lord is my strength and my song and that he also has become my salvation is a quote. It's a quote from a biblical song. That song is found in Exodus. You with me? So here we are. The Lord is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation is from a song. Let's turn it over and look at that song in Exodus chapter number two. Not Exodus chapter number two. I'm giving you the wrong chapter. Um, Exodus 15 and verse number two. Exodus 15 and 
Exodus 15. And here the, the Israelites have just come through the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army has just been destroyed. And so when they got to the other side, the ver verse 1 says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song. So here's a song that they're singing unto the Lord and spake saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So again, the army of Pharaoh has been destroyed. Now look at verse number two. The Bible says, the Lord is my strength and song. The Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Do you see it? And so that quote comes from a song in the word of God as the Israelites are singing in praise to God. This is the quoted portion from Isaiah. The song then goes on to declare that he is my God and I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. Do you see that? Look one more time at verse number two. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. That's the quoted portion. Goes on to say, the song goes on to say, he is my God and I will prepare him an habitation my father's God, and I will exalt him. The idea of a habitation for God. In the same way that we build for ourselves habitations, we should build for God a habitation, a place for him to dwell in. Okay? But what can we possibly build for God to dwell in, for him to inhabit? Well, turn with me to Psalm 22, if you would, please. Psalm 22. Famous psalm. This is the psalm, uh, 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 a messianic psalm talking about Christ crying out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Look down at verse number three, if you would, please. The Bible says, but thou art holy, O thou that, what's the next word, church? Inhabitest, that dwelleth in the praises of his people of Israel. God inhabits the praises of his people. When we sing songs of praise to our Lord, we build him a habitation. He dwells within the praises of his people. Therefore, we can use the gift of song that God has given to us to build a habitation for our Lord to dwell in. Now that we know that, the question is, what kind of place are we building for him? What kind of habitation are you building for God with your praise? Will we build him a shack, just something that we give second thought to, because, you know, I just worship God because that's what I'm supposed to. I don't put a lot of thought. I don't put a lot of heart into it. Will we build him a shack, but, but yet require for ourselves some kind of mansion in this world? Will we build for ourselves better than we will build for God. What are we building for him? There's another important question. When we do take the time to build a habitation for the Lord using the materials of song and praise, here's another important question. Would he approve of the materials you're using? So again, the idea, am I building him a shack or am I really putting some thought and heart into this thing? Well, if I'm putting some thought and heart into this thing of singing praise and worship to God, then the question becomes, all right, does God approve of the materials that I'm using to build the praise with? That's an important question. If we are using music drawn from the wells of this world to build the Lord and house of praise, God's not interested so if I'm drawing out of this well in order to kind of lift it up and offer it to God as praise to him, God is not interested. The Bible says, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now with that in mind, turn back to Isaiah. We must draw our songs of praise out of the right well. We've got to draw them out of the wells of salvation, if you will, that we find here in the book of Isaiah. And then when we do, the song that we find, as we've already seen, is the Lord himself. 
The Lord is my song. Look one more time at verse number two. Behold, God is my salvation. I'm drawing him out of the wells of salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and the Lord Jehovah is my song. God is my song. So consider with me this most important point. Thirdly this morning, the fact that the Lord is my song. That's what, the, that's what the prophet is saying here. That's what Isaiah is saying, that the Lord is my song. And I want you to notice, if you would, please, the personal language that is used. Look at verse number two again. Behold, God is my salvation. Not the salvation of my people, not the salvation of Israel, but God is my salvation. I doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. doesn't matter what anybody else is thinking. It doesn't matter how anybody else is responding to God. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is, there it is again, he is my strength and he is my song. And so this is extremely personal. This is about me and this is about you. We should be able to say the same thing, that the Lord Jehovah God is my song. He is my strength. He is my salvation. He is my song. Therefore, as I come to the wells of salvation to draw water out, I draw out God. I draw out the Lord. And the Lord gives to me a song. He is my song. And all of us should be able to say the same thing. When I come to the wells of salvation, I'm the one that's doing the drawing. When's the last time you came to the wells of salvation, so to speak, to draw anything out? And you are the one that has to do it. I cannot do it for you. You cannot do it for me. I must do it. I must draw out of the wells. And when I do, I draw out the Lord. I draw out the, and, and he is my song. And so this is true for any one of us who is willing to draw out of the wells of salvation. So what kind of song is it? Well, according to the word of God, it might be psalms or hymns or spiritual songs that we draw out. Again, in Ephesians chapter number five, the Bible says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. A psalm is a melody of praise. A hymn is defined as a song in honor of God. So songs that honor God. In other words, someone, someone said this one, once a long time ago. It's just stuck with me. That a hymn is about him. And so it's an ode in praise to God. And so psalms are a melody of praise. A hymn is a song in honor of God. And then there are spiritual songs. And these are songs that are about our Christian walk and, our, and, our, and encouraging our walk with God. Now, as we've already noted, the Bible is a musical book and that songs are scattered throughout its pages. Consequently, the Bible gives us the template for the words that we should use in our music of praise to God. Now, I'm not saying that the songs that we use in praise to God that honor and lift up God, that are psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. I'm not saying that the, the songs of men will, will be like this template in the sense that they are infallible. They are not. But, but they should not be out of place in this book, with the words of this book, with the songs of this book. What do I mean? Well, think about this. There's a song that we sing, I Surrender All, right? I surrender all. That might be a song that we draw out. It's a, it's a spiritual song. It's about me surrendering my life to God, my walk with the Lord. And I sing that, that spiritual song. That's not infallible, not like the words of God, but it's not out of place either. You with me? Or how about this? I draw this out and I, I come up with, I wouldn't get it from this well. I draw it out of this well and, and I want to give myself to God, kind of like, you know, Cain and Abel and Cain's sacrifice to God. He drew it out of this well. And it kind of sounds like, you know, I did it my way. Now, which one is more in place with the word of God, more in line with the word of God? I surrender all or I did it my way. 
We okay? But why should we sing songs of praise to God and build a habitation for him? Why should we do that? Because all that he give, because of all that he gives us so freely. That's why we ought to do it. I mean, think about all that, that we are able to draw out of the wells of salvation, all that God gives us so freely. Those things that are create a, just a, any number of songs in our heart to sing praises unto God. Think about this, for instance. If you're drawing out of the wells of salvation, one of the things you're going to draw out is love. Because God is love. And God teaches us to love. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy might. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it. And love thy neighbors thyself. We're going to draw love out of the well. <clears throat> and, and, and that love is going to be compared to the love of God. And the Bible says, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. It's the love of God and that kind of love that is willing to lay down its life for its friends. That kind of love that gives everything for us should motivate us to sing songs of praise to our God who was willing to give everything for us because he loved us. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Amen. Because of the love of God, we ought to want to sing because we draw out of that well the love of God. We also draw out of that well the grace of God. The goodness of God, the kindness of God, the strength of God to, to, uh, to live this Christian life. He spared not his own son, the Bible said, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not then also by him freely give us all things? And so God sacrificed his son so that he could freely give to us his grace. He could freely give to us all things that we need for life and holiness. Amen. His divine power is given to us because of the grace of God. I mean, praise God for the grace that saved a wretch like me. Amen. Praise God for the grace that is given to me on a daily basis. And praise God for the grace that saved you and for the grace that God gives to you on a daily basis. His grace should be sufficient and more than enough reason to lift our voice in song to him. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden. Setting my spirit free. For the wonderful grace of Jesus. Reaches me. Amen. There are causes to want to sing. How about this? One of the things that we need in our walk with God is cleansing from God. And we find that cleansing in the well of salvation. We can draw it out. And God cleanses us completely. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The cleansing of God is complete. It does the job. Listen to me. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? And so I mess up. I mess up with my brother Jeff and I come to him and I beg his forgiveness and I go to the Lord and I leave it at the cross and I beg God to, to forgive me and I confess what I've done. What does God say he's going to do? Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when I get up from there, I'm clean. But because I'm a man, I can still feel bad about it, can't I? I can still have the guilt of it, can't I? And Satan can still use that as a wedge between me and God. And let me know over and over again what a rotten, dirty, rotty, rotten scoundrel I am. Remember what you did to Brother Sean Rock? You remember when you, how can you call yourself a Christian and you did that? What did I do, by the way? Do you remember? You with me? And Satan just brings you down and brings you down. And so I get convicted again, and I come back to God, and I'm praying, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me for what I've done. And I can imagine, I can imagine God saying, Son, I'm grateful you have the tender heart. 
I'm grateful you've come to me. I'm grateful you're asking for forgiveness. But what are you talking about? I don't remember that one. You're the one that's hurting yourself. You're the one that keeps bringing that up. Not me. Oh. What does that kind of forgiveness do in your heart? To know that God is faithful and just, that he will forgive your sins and cleanse you, that kind of cleansing from all unrighteousness, ought that not to speak to our heart? Ought that not to bring a song to our heart? They're underneath the blood on the cross of Calvary. As far removed as darkness is from dawn in the sea of God's forgetfulness, that's Good enough for me. Praise God. My sins are gone. Amen? The world likes to sing. But they're drawing their songs from the wrong well. Pretty as they might be, catchy as they might be, they're barren. The songs of this world. We, on the other hand, we have a song to sing that is drawn from the wells of salvation. The Lord is my song. As the psalmist says, it is a new song. And he has put a new song in my mouth. It's not from this old well. It's not from this barren well. It's a new well. It's a, it's a well that, we, that I come over to here to get. And when I'm singing these songs, I'm actually singing God's song. He is my song. God has put a new song in my mouth. However, that does not mean that we will sing songs always that are drawn from the wells of salvation. You see, we have a choice of what kind of song we will sing. We're either going to sing the songs that we draw from the wells of salvation or the songs that we sing from the wells of this world. And it's our choice. We have every reason to praise God, but no reason really to praise ourselves. Every reason to come over here and sing glory to God. No reason to stay over here and lift up man. With our praise, we build for our God a place of habitation, a place for him to dwell. And because of all that, is God, that God has so freely given to us, we ought to want to build a house for our God, a habitation for him. Additionally, Music speaks directly to the emotions, as we've already mentioned at the beginning of the message. And when we sing these songs that we draw out of the well of salvation, when we really apply them to our heart and our life and allow God to be our song, then you're going to find that your valleys are never going to be quite as low as they might have been otherwise. And you're going to find that your storms will never be quite so strong as they would have been otherwise. Because that God of peace will keep you through the songs that you sing. Isaiah said, the Lord is my song. I'm asking you this morning, can you say the same thing? Isaiah said, I came to the wells. I drew out of those wells. And I found out that not only is the Lord my salvation, but he is my song. Can you say the same thing? If so, then will you sing a new song drawn from this well to your God with your life? Or will you go back to the barren wells? It's a choice. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you this morning, Lord, I thank you for an opportunity to open your word. I thank you for an opportunity, Lord, to see how powerful and important the issue of song and singing and music is in the life of a believer. And that because we are musical creatures, we're going to want to sing. The question is, where are we going to draw our, our, our song from? Lord, because we have fallen... We run to the wells of this world. 
the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Lord, we need to look no further than the lyrics of so many popular songs to see that they come from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Lord, help us to find that new song that you talk about in your word, coming over to the wells of salvation and drawing out my Lord and my God, who is my salvation, who is my strength, and he is my song. And Lord, I pray that everyone here today would have a desire to make their life that kind of song of praise to you, to give you a place of habitation and to be serious about it. Lord, we give, we'll give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Heads bowed. And I...